In this edition of INN CEO Talks, I'm joined by Stephen Borrega of Romeo's Gold. And today we're talking about copper, gold, and silver exploration in North America. Stephen, welcome. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? I am very well. And I'm quite keen to know more about Romeo's Gold. Let's start with an overview of the company. Sure. We've been around for 27 years now. Uh, I think it's not not overly common to, to talk about junior exploration companies in that kind of timeline, but uh, it was founded by a gentleman named Tom Drivis, and he did an exceptional job of pulling together core assets in some really exciting neighborhoods. So we have a, a very large land package in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia, uh, another asset in uh, a similar size asset in Northwestern Ontario on the same uh, greenstone belt as the Muscle White Mine, Newmont's giant Muscle White Mine and some core assets down in, in Nevada as well. So over the last year of uh, during my time with the company, I've been focusing on trying to, how to, to decide how best to streamline the company. We've got these huge assets, very exciting assets, and now we need to figure out how can we do, uh, do work and bring the proper partnerships forward to be able to, uh, to develop each of these core assets uh, properly. So in the case of British Columbia, most recently we have some news out. We can talk about that for your viewers in a little bit. Uh, looking for partnerships or the possibility of a spin out in that case. And same with Ontario. We're going to be hyper focused in the, in the coming 2023 campaign. And we're going to be focusing on Nevada primarily. So the other two assets, we're looking for partners. And, uh, and I've got some really exciting news to be able to talk to everyone about today. Well, let's get to that news, uh, both in Nevada and in British Columbia. Perfect. Well, just last week, we announced the, uh, the discovery of, of, of a very exciting anomaly, an IP anomaly in the Golden Triangle, and it's on our Trek claim block. It's called Trek South. And uh, most exciting thing that we've seen in, in BC in our, on our properties in, in ages. It's an 800 meter long IP target that's up to 500 meters wide. And uh, the IP shows it at a depth of uh, 650 meters and the MT shows it to continue on up to two kilometers. So it's a very substantial target. Uh, it's the likes of which you, you can compare it to probably one of the core assets over at Galore Creek, just north of us. And uh, we're very excited to be able to, uh, to finally be talking about it. It was a very significant campaign, work campaign this past summer, one of the largest we've had in years. And uh, we have some great, uh, great uh, results as a, uh, that, that came out of that program. The really interesting thing is that there's a, it's, you know, it's, it has all the makings of, uh, of a multi-layer uh, target. So you have a one kilometer uh, significant uh, one kilometer epidote uh, mineralization overprinted by an 800 meter uh, quartz pyrite stock works. And then you've got this IP and MT uh, data that shows the depth. And, and we've previously flown mag survey that shows two plutons that are on either side of this of this target. All of that equates to a very exciting, well-defined target. And the proximity to uh, infrastructure is the likes of which you could only dream about in the, in the context of the Golden Triangle, which is quite remote. Galore Creek, which is a, an asset owned, uh, co-owned by Newmont and Tech in a 50-50 partnership, is our, our, our neighbor directly to the north. And they've partially cleared road access and that road is approximately one kilometer away from Trek South. So it's perfectly situated for, uh, for access points. And their proposed mill site is actually just about 10 kilometers away as the crow flies. We can see their proposed mill site from the Trek South uh, uh, location. So infrastructure speaking, it's, it's ideally located. Uh, and now we have all the hallmarks of a really exciting copper porphyry to talk to potential partners and to plan for our 2023 uh, campaign. How far away are you from talking to those potential partners? Uh, without getting into too many details, uh, ongoing. Uh, you know, we've, I've, been, I've been keen to be able to talk about BC with the various majors that are operating in the area, uh, as well as those that have been looking at, uh, and, and looking at acquiring assets. So these conversations continue. Um, nothing to report at this stage, and uh, but without a question, we're very much looking for a strong partner that can understand 
the uh, the context of such a large target and uh, the need for significant financing in order to explore these 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 big copper porphyry targets. So that's British Columbia, pretty good mining jurisdiction on its own. But now you're focused on Nevada, which is a great mining jurisdiction. Tell us about uh, what what's happening there. When I first joined the team uh, about a year ago, I brought uh, to the table a, 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 an early stage asset called Kincaid. Uh, we staked it. Uh, there's a 2% NSR on it. Otherwise, uh, it's um, early stage, exciting, 109 claims uh, in just, just east of Hawthorne in the southwest quadrant of Nevada in the Walker Lane trend. It's a very early stage project, but it's got all the hallmarks of some exciting uh, potential uh, for copper uh, running with gold or running with silver, and in some cases running with both. Uh, we've had some ex extremely high grade surface samples, uh, grab samples that we've identified to date. High copper north of 7%, uh, silver grade, so, some, some assays coming back north of 1,000 grams. Uh, gold grades coming back, assays coming back in the 30 plus gram per ton range. All of this is, is, is intriguing. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We got to get boots on the ground and uh, better understand the southern half of the property. On the northern half of the, of the Kincaid project, we're going to be tracking a large, larger structure, SCARN structures, uh, and that's really um, a more of a blue sky, large, larger uh, uh, thrust fault model that we've got, we're, we're exploring on the northern half of the property. So Kincaid is is early stage stuff, but at this stage, it's really exciting, uh, and we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us. But uh, you know, early stage, early uh, indications are very strong. The second asset we have in, in Nevada is called SCOSA. SCOSA has actually been on our books now for 22 years. Uh, it was first staked in, or first acquired, excuse me, in 1999. And we've had some exceptional, uh, we had some exceptional drill results, bonanza grade drill results early on in 2000, um, but nothing really significant since. Now, granted back in 2000, the uh, price of gold was somewhere in the $200, $300 range. So it really wasn't a priority. Obviously, in today's market, it's a very different story. And I keep on uh, lovingly referring it to as my, my barn find. It's like that, that, that perfect car that you've been looking for all your life. It's two, found in a barn in the middle of a field with two inches of dust on it. That's what we have at Scosa. It was operational in between 30 and 41, 1930 and 1941. And the average grade that came out of the mine was over an ounce per ton. And they only ever actually mined down 400 feet. Now, the model that we're going to be chasing in this particular case is identifying the boiling zone level at SCOSA. And everything above it has the potential for, uh, for tracking on that high mineralization, that high grade mineralization that the old timers were, were after back in the, in the 30s. And I'm really excited to get the drill back to Scosa, that's for sure. And that's something that we're going to be focusing on in 2023. How are you situated for money? Like, do you have what you need to be able to build out through your next stages of development? Well, we're very fortuitous because we actually have a, a fairly significant portfolio uh, of marketable securities. Unfortunately, as everyone has felt, uh, you know, this, this past summer has really affected it negatively. But uh, we did a deal with a group called Enduro, uh, and uh, we, you know, we have eight million Enduro shares that uh, at one point had a close to two and a half million dollar value to it. My portfolio sits somewhere in the million and a half range right now, so we are we're well positioned financially speaking. But I'll certainly be looking in the new year to identifying uh, opportunities to cash up the company, whether it be through partnership. As I mentioned, I'm keen to find partners for British Columbia and Ontario. So as part of that structure, I would hope to see some cash components to it. Also, there's a possibility of doing a raise in the new in the new year as well. What's your message to investors who are going, okay, gold, copper, silver, like uh, these are the commodities that we really should be looking at right now. Isn't it, you know, shouldn't we be looking at the electrific electrification of vehicle transportation as being sort of the core uh, components? Uh, um, you know, to investors, what do you say? Without copper, there are no, there is no electrification. So, you know, at the end of the day, there's more copper in an electric car than there is anything else. Um, I think we're sitting on a, a huge opportunity uh, with our with our copper assets. 
I, of course, precious metals, I, I, I tend to uh, understand and I hear it all the time that, uh, that, you know, gold is out of vogue and uh, what, you know, the markets aren't responding in a, in a normal way right now as far as precious metals are concerned. But a big focus of our asset base is copper. So as far as the electrification of the world goes, uh, I think we're extremely well positioned. And I think the assets, especially uh, our, our latest, our latest uh, target in the Golden Triangle at Trek South, uh, we're very excited to move that forward for that very reason, that electrification is here to stay. Um, and uh, while, whether it's a lithium battery or a new technology, copper as a, as a major component of these, of these vehicles moving forward is not going to go away. That is a significant portion of, uh, of, the, of the electrification world moving forward. So what is your message to investors right at the moment if they start to look at Romeos and go, okay, should I be putting my money here? Why should they be considering it? I think the key is, is that we're sitting on the same core assets that we had 10 years ago when we were close to a $100 million market cap. First and foremost, we know more about those assets than ever before. Obviously, with the, with the identification of Trek South being a, a completely new target for us in British Columbia, it was, it was completely covered by glaciers uh, less, than, less than three years ago. Um, it's an ex exciting uh, target that I think will have a, a huge benefit to the company as a whole. But shareholders have to look at, at Romeos as potentially the, you know, the equivalent of three companies. Uh, whether we find partnerships or spin out some of these core assets, uh, the valuation of a sub $10 million market cap on us today, um, every, every shareholder needs to make a decision and say, do you see potential value in their, in their investment? And I hope that they could look at our core, uh, core asset base and realize that there's potential. That's all I would ask for. Uh, if I could get on everybody's radar to keep, uh, to keep on the top 10 list, I think I'd be winning at this point because it's a tough market. But there's a lot of money on the, on the sidelines right now. I believe that. And uh, I think that it's looking for smart, way, smart places to put their dollar. And uh, we all know how difficult that the, the exploration sector can be. So the fact that we're sitting in three great jurisdictions with three, I think, exceptional groupings of assets puts us in a very fortuitous position. Well, very interesting to learn about the company, your projects, and of course, the markets that you're in. And I hope that you're going to come back uh, in the coming months and give us some updates on, on how all of this is uh, working out. I look forward to it. I really do. I, there's, there's a lot of moving parts over the coming quarter or two. A lot of news to come out, and, uh, and I, I look forward to telling your viewers all about it. So thanks very much for the opportunity today. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for your time today.